So why did I decide to build the tiny home? Well, me, Echo, and Miles, we were all staying in my hometown in the mountains in North Carolina. We had already traveled around the world, seen many places, and we weren't about to stop. But I thought it would be a really fun experience to build a tiny home, and then we would have a place to stay whenever we were visiting, a place that really worked with us for who we are. So towards late fall, early winter, I decided to start building a tiny home. I had my cousin Taylan help me, and a friend of ours, his name is Buddy, he is truly an expert builder who has more years in construction than I have in being alive. Truly a master carpenter. And he led us, and he led several of our friends and family who just came over to help us and support us as we built this truly amazing tiny home. A tiny home, 16 feet by 16 feet, but Honestly, it's more than enough, especially since we have all this forest around here to go and play in. We have a lot of deer, so my plan is to get some deer licking salt and deer aroma so we can spread it around the forest and hopefully have a small herd come through. Right here, we're going to put big windows. We're talking six foot by six foot, about two meters by two meters. And just giant windows that we can look into the forest and hopefully see some deer. It took us about two months to finish the house. We didn't work every day. Certainly some days it snowed, so we didn't Tiny work. Tiny house construction site is currently on pause. Some days we just didn't feel like working, so we didn't work. Other days I had other projects I had to work on, so we didn't work on those days either. But I would say a good, you know, two thirds of the days we worked. And because of that, we we're able to finish the tiny home in about two months. For me, it was really important that the tiny home supported the local ecology. A lot of people, they advised me, for example, if I want to get electricity, just to chop all the trees down, and then I would have a driveway, and then I, the power company could put the power poles in, it would be easy, but it would have really gotten rid of what we want. And we wanted a place that was, it was solitude, it was secluded deep in the forest, a peaceful place where we could, you know, listen to ourselves or to the animals or to the trees and not to the rest of the world. One of the ways we protected the forest was putting the power lines under the ground. This of course was far more work. We were able to use a machine to help us, but still we had to go through roots and we had to go around trees. So because of that, we had to do a lot by hand. But it's good because since we went through by hand, we weren't really damaging the thick mushroom layer in the forest. The mushrooms under the forest are incredibly vital to transporting water and nutrients through the forest. And I don't want to create a line right through it. So we made that small hole and on top I filled it with fertilizer so that the ground could rapidly grow again. And it did, it healed in no time. When we finally moved into our tiny home, it was just so amazing. I truly love just the experience of being there in the deep forest and with the animals right outside of the house. And it's just so peaceful, so calming, so comforting. It's truly an amazing place to stay.